This week's edition of Church Media Design TV is sponsored by WorshipHouseMedia.com, resources for the creative church, and DansInkandToner.com, wholesale ink and toner, and a whole lot more. Welcome to a very special edition of Church Media Design TV. It's the birthday edition. Yes, I will boast it is my birthday today, the best day of the year. Well, for me, besides Christmas and Coast Guard Festival, which are my two other favorite times of year. And Easter's ranked right up there. Adam's laughing his head off because, well, Coast Guard's amazingly fun. Anyway, um, I'm so glad you guys are here. And join with me, as always, is the... Bueller... Bueller, 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 Bueller. Where are the bobbleheads? Well, I guess uh, we got Ben Stein here because the post office didn't screw up twice. I got my second package. They lost the first one, but we have Ben Stein, the newest bobblehead, added to the collection uh, from Expelled, which is now playing on wingclipscinema.com. So uh, we thank uh, Wingclips for sending over our little Ben Stein, and we join him into the family, and he'll be stopping by every now and again to... Uh, take care of the boys, but for now it's just uh, me and him. So anyway, on this week's edition of the podcast, we're going to be talking about a whole bunch of stuff and I'm going to be really distracted because a TV right over there is playing the election results for the 2009 election. Who knows who won? I'm going to take a fair guess and say it's not Ron Paul um, because he wasn't on most people's ballots or anyone's ballots. Um, but anyway, we'll get into the show. You guys know who won because this airs a week after we tape it. So anyway, uh, if, well, if our good friend Ben Stein's ready, let's get into it. Well, this week in the news, besides the fact that it's my 25th birthday and I finally can rent a car without getting screwed by the prices. Yes, I finally, on my honeymoon, now that I'm 25, I can rent a car and not have to pay nine bajillion dollars for the stupid car because, you know, there's a big difference between when I'm 24 than when I'm 25. If any of you people work at the stupid rental car places, your prices suck. Why does it matter that I'm 25 versus 24? There's no difference. <sighs> I digress. So anyway, here's some real news for you. Uh, MTV, they're finally doing something right. And it's called MTVmusic.com. And um, I'm laughing pretty hard because they have some hilarious little images in here. Like, I want my Pearl Jam. And it's uh, MTV Music. This is MTVmusic.com, by the way. But these little uh, headers are pretty funny. And they're really well designed. So if anything, go check those out. But we could go type in an artist like... Um, let's type in an artist like Switchfoot. Uh, if I can spell Switch. Uh, there we go. I'm terrible at spelling, just so you guys know. So here comes Switchfoot, and apparently there's no Switchfoot videos. But I know one person that there is videos by who some of you guys might like. His name's Matt Carney. And all of his videos are on here, or not all of, three of his videos are on here. I lie. But it's pretty sweet because you can actually embed these in your blog. Uh, yet again, Stevan Sheets um, on his blog uh, talked about this and had one of uh, Matt Carney's uh, videos embedded. It's pretty sweet. The really sweet thing is MTV's finally doing music again. You know, the whole uh, music TV. Yeah, they're finally back to it. So uh, music television is back. And speaking of music... Um, head over to uh, Hillsong.com and check out Hillsong London's new album called Hail to the King. Now, Hillsong London uh, came out with a CD um, a few years back. It's been probably two or three years, and it was a great album. had a lot of great songs that most people missed, like It's a New Day, which is just a phenomenal track. And there's a few other ones in there. 
Um, and then they did a remix of it, and uh, the first, that album was called Jesus's, and then they did Jesus's remix, which was a techno remix of it. And the newest album is Hail to the King, and Hillsong London is off of the Hillsong Australia Church, but based out of London. They meet in a movie theater, or a theater in London, and it's a really, really cool church, but they, on this album, have kind of moved away from the anthem rock style of the regular Hillsong um, album, you know, flow that you get in most Hillsong albums. And they're doing a lot more um, Brit pop centered, centered kind of music. So it's a really interesting album. It's got some cool stuff. The feature track, Hail to the King, is really cool. It's got this random Swing Low Sweet Chariot in the middle of it that actually makes me laugh, but I think it's pretty sweet um, in the middle of the song. So I would encourage you guys to check out uh, that Hillsong London album. It's out now on at least Hillsong's website, and I'm not sure about iTunes. So you can check that out. So that's a little news for you uh, around the interwebs as well as why I finally get to rent a car for cheap. So this week's review is going to be about Church Metrics, which is by the Digerati team over at LifeChurch.tv. You can find Church Metrics at churchmetrics.com. And Sam Duriger, is that right? Duriger? Yeah, I don't know. Sorry, man. I I can't say your last name. Um, You can find his uh, blog, actually. It's uh, duriger.net, I believe. Yeah, D-U-R-E. E G G E R dot net. So you can find out some of his thoughts and his portfolio and follow him on Twitter and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, he was nice enough to give me a sneak peek ahead of time of church metrics. And so um, instead of me actually doing this review, what I did is I took the system and I said to our um, office assistant, Angela, I said, Ange, can you please take this? Throw our information into it and you check it out. You're the person who's going to use this. This is the person I'm going to put it into the hands of in the long run anyway. I want your thoughts on it. So she plugged in everything and she showed me the application, which was really cool. It was actually really cool seeing somebody else and how they used it. I actually sat and looked over her shoulder and kind of watched what things she clicked and where she found things and and all that kind of stuff. Because for me as uh, doing web design and all that kind of stuff, I could see like, okay, that's where you should click for that kind of stuff. But it was fun watching somebody who's not into that and how she handled it. So anyway, so Ange went, went in and plugged in all our information. So we've been using church metrics for for about three weeks now, um, and it just came out just recently. You might have seen a push through on Twitter and a bunch of different blogs, like the Swerve blog from LifeChurch.tv. Um, but anyway, the Digerati team did an amazing job, and Church Metrics is a uh, simple, uh, smart, simple tracking tool. Um, basically, it's a web-based client to track giving, salvation, and uh, attendance for all of your different uh, events at your church. Um, and also baptisms. So we're gonna go over to the login. Pretty cool, once you sign up, you actually get to pick a subdomain. So you get yourchurch.churchmetrics.com and that's where you're gonna head to. So um, I work for Watermark Church in Michigan and um, so we're just gonna log in here and I'm not gonna tell you our password. And uh, we're gonna not worry about that right now. So we're gonna log in. And here is kind of our dashboard. Um, So as you can see in the dashboard, you can see our giving review and what we have going on. And um, you can see kind of some lost parts in attendance history because, well, we don't have any attendance plugged in from 2005 to 2006. But it's pretty cool. You can see all the different spikes in when your attendance is. It plots all that stuff out. It's a very easy system to use. So this is kind of your main dashboard and your main area. There's really great information on your little sidebar here that tells you all the things. Now, one cool thing about this system is it's set up for multiple campuses. Now, a lot of churches across the country, I think there's maybe two churches left in the top 10 churches in the country that are not multi-campus churches. Uh, One of those churches is uh, Joel Osteen's church, and I'm not sure what the other one is, but the majority of larger churches in the country are multi-site churches, and even a lot of smaller churches are multi-site. And LifeChurch.tv for sure is multi-site, and um, they're kind of one of the big pioneers in multi-site. And um, so their need is to have multi-campuses. And so you can add multiple campuses if you only have one 
campus, you can just have the one. And so we made that a high school. So here is WM High as our abbreviation, and we can our description is that this is our main campus. You also can have regions. So if you have multiple campuses in different regions, you can tag those for different regions and do different things like that. Now we can go to service times. And uh, it's pretty interesting. We can actually have a master, you have a master service time that shows um, your service times throughout the year. So we meet at 9.15 and 11 a.m. So that's our master uh, template. Then underneath, you can add these other templates that actually go through and override your master template. So you set a starting and an ending date. And when those start and end dates um, happen, those uh, will override your master template and just throw it in there. So like for us on the first of the year, the Sunday right after the first, really low attendance, we don't have a lot of people around, so we do a combined one gathering at 10 a.m. So what we can go do is we can say that we want a um, first of the year uh, template that does um, overrides and just has a 10 o'clock gathering as well as all summer long our church meets outside we uh, do a 10 a.m. gathering we do it outside so we can have another template in there for outside that overwrites that 9 15 and 11 that we use 75 percent of the time but this overwrites it so it's a pretty cool pretty cool little feature that you can do that with you can enter in projections of how much you expect giving and attendance to be so you can see you know this is what our budget's supposed to be per week and this is where we landed are we above or below and it will show if you've been plus or minus where you're supposed to be um and so we can go over to input and we could go to uh the week of 11 to which is this past Sunday and we can do get service times for this campus and then we can just click on a service time and in here we can just input our attendance we can input our kids attendance salvation giving and baptisms for all the different areas now one interesting thing is this actually does it per gathering time and so you kind of need to split up and track your um, uh, do your counting and that kind of stuff per gathering so you need to make sure you're counting your kids per gathering and not just totaling that up and passing that number off so sometimes you might need to shift the way you do things to fit into their system a little bit um, but it's not a big deal you can easily do that so you can easily go plug things in we can go click on the 11 a.m. and then you can also plug in your giving now we have chosen just to shove in giving on our 11 a.m. service and not on each because we don't track giving per gathering we track giving as a Sunday morning as a whole um, so that's a really cool thing um, and you can go over to charts and then we can check out our charts and this is our attendance history and we can go in and we can add certain dates so um, on here we can go and say let's uh, let's do from 10 instead of 10 12 03 let's do 10 12 uh, 07 to 11 02 08 and do show and now we have a uh, you know, a year from yesterday view. And we can see that and we can actually go through and check that out. Also, one really cool thing is the reports area. Now we can go and pick out a certain Sunday morning. So we can do October 26, do build report. And this shows all of our different information. We can show total attendance, kids attendance, salvations. Um, then we can open up our pop-up menu and we can do detailed reports about a bunch of different things. So we can do that about our financial sat status and we can do this about our uh, attendance status. And so this tool is really great for tracking what's going on so that you don't get lost in your numbers, but you can focus on what you need to be doing, which is preparing messages and, and building up the kingdom and sharing Christ with others because we don't want to get lost in all of this stupid monotonous stuff. Not that this is stupid, but this isn't the end goal. The end goal isn't counting numbers and making that. That's not our priority. Our priority is seeing the kingdom be um, enlarged um, for God's glory. And so um, this is a really great tool for that. And one of the cool things is you can go to, um, in the admin area, we can go and we can uh, change all our different business here but um, we can also change you know your church information but we can also add in users 
Um, so sorry, that's actually in the users area. And so we can add in multiple users that have different privileges. Now your admin has the most privileges, um, but then you can add in multiple other users and those users can uh, be people like your board or other staff members or people you want to keep in the loop. So like we um, will eventually have one for our leadership team and then we'll have one for the staff that the staff can log in with. That way, um, once Ange throws in all this information, each week our different people in all of these different areas can go to this one central place and they can be tracking this stuff without having to bother anybody else and they can keep a clear picture so that when they walk into a board meeting or when they walk into a leadership meeting, they can know clearly where things are at and they're not thrown for a loop and we don't have to sit there and present data to them. They can be looking um, for the time before that. So. Church metrics, that's kind of the tip of the iceberg of what it does. It does a whole lot more, and I know that I've talked to Sam a little bit, and they're working on a bunch of new features and and uh, addressing some of the different um, requests that people have been throwing out there, and they have a great support section where you can throw in issues or anything that's going on with church metrics, and I know that they had uh, well over a 1,000 churches sign up within the first day, which is just amazing um, to know that this many people want to be using this. The other thing to note, too, is they do have a mobile site so you can check this out on your iPhone or on a Blackberry or anything that has a normal web browser on it so um, that's pretty sweet so anyway that's just kind of a sneak peek and a, well not a sneak peek because it's after it launched it's a peek at uh, the inside of churchmetrics.com well oh hey the uh, the shepherd has come back for his flock you heard Ben Stein was uh, trying to take over his work so uh, the Son of the Lord Most High is here, so everyone can bow down because, well, maybe we shouldn't bow down because he's just a bobblehead. Anyway, let's keep it moving. Uh, this week's how-to, we're going to start a little series on basic compositing. Um, I did a video recently for our gathering in which I did a little like very, very basic compositing that I think might be helpful and uses a few different tools that maybe you didn't think to use this way. So um, I'll show you a little clip of what I'm talking about here. Um, we have this guy and he is uh, gonna work on his computer. And so what I did is we shot the computer and him typing on it, but I shot the screen totally black. And um, then what we did is we actually composited in his screen and I composited in this fake bank and all this different stuff and did all the different masking on his fingers. And it's not perfect, but I did this in about a day, a little less than a day uh, worth of work, I did the entire video. So it didn't take very much time to do this, and it works really well for a speedy result. I know that there's probably a lot better ways, and I could have sat down and, and worked out a little bit um, harder, but I think the uh, final effect turned out pretty nicely. So what we're going to work on is how to actually put something on that computer screen and make it look right in the first place. So uh, we'll close that out, and what the first step we're going to do is we're going to go inside After Effects, and we're going to take a look here, and here's my original footage. So we have him typing here, and he puts his hands up. So we're going to take a shot right about here. His hands are pretty normal. We got most of the screen going on. We can see uh, the entire area. Now I shot this specifically so that his hands weren't going above the screen too much and that his arm especially wasn't going in front of the screen so that I could have a very full view of it but that and I also shot it with the computer off on purpose so that I didn't have to deal with the light issues on the screen and you'll see why I did that later and it will come into real um, really handy that this uh, computer screen was off. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to um, uh, composition, we're going to do same frame as and we're going to do uh, file and we're just going to go down here it's going to save it as a PSD and we'll uh, figure out where this is rendering to this is just going to render to our desktop and we'll just hit render and it's going to render that frame out and now we're done so now we can minimize that and then we're just going to open this guy up with Photoshop and this uh, message pops up that says pistol pixel uh, aspect ratio correction is for preview purposes only turn it off for maximum image quality hit OK and what that means up here at the top you can see that it says scaled 
If we flip back over to After Effects, um, the video footage that I'm using is using a widescreen pixel ratio, which is a, um, if we go up to our comp settings, we can do composition comp settings, you can see that it is using a 16 or a 1.33 pixel ratio. So it's wider than a real pixel. Um, or it's actually going to stretch those pixels out to make a square pixel. Um, and TVs have been doing this for the longest time. NTSC's natural standard is a 0.9 pixel ratio. It's not actually square, it's a small rectangle. And these are a very wide pixel. Um, and so this is our toggle to see what, this is what the footage really looks like versus what the footage looks like when it's being scaled. Now we're gonna fix that inside Photoshop. So in here, we're gonna go up to view and we're gonna do uh, pixel aspect ratio correction. We're gonna turn that off. And then we have our final image here. Now we're gonna go to image and go to image size. Now normally I wouldn't tell you to do this because this is, if we change our image size, it's actually gonna skew and distort our image. Well, we actually wanna do that. And we wanna set this to our, um, let's, holding the alt key, we can do reset. We're gonna turn off uh, constraint proportions and we're gonna make this a 1280 by 720 image. Now the reason we're doing a 1280 by 720 image is because that is what our footage be is being shot at. We're shooting 720p footage and so if that uh, image wasn't being uh, wasn't using uh, weird pixels, it would be a 1280 by 720 square pixel image. So we're just gonna stretch that image in its natural form. And this is gonna come in handy when we're actually doing our filter and making it work inside Photoshop. So if we, um, the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out how to actually throw something on here. So what we could do is we could go in here, we could take our type tool and write hello, and then we could take and we could do what we talked about a few weeks ago. We'll rasterize this type and then we'll do control T and then we'll, you know, we'll skew this and pull out all these points to the different corners and get it all lined up so it's right on the screen and then maybe scale it down now that we have it in the right uh, form. And now we can have it say hello but it doesn't really look that realistic. And that would be a big pain in the butt to do and how do you do animation and all that kind of stuff. That doesn't really work very well. So we'll just undo all that and get back to our normal image. Uh, I'm just gonna double click and not make this a background just for the fun of it. And we're gonna go up and we're gonna use a filter called Vanishing Point. Now Vanishing Point came into play in Adobe CS3. And what it does is allow you to make 3D space on a 2D image. It will go through and you draw out a plane and it figures out, okay, that's what angle is that plane at? I wanna, it's basically trying to take, um, if we would draw a plane here on our computer screen, it's going to make a square plane and then rotate that in 3D space and say that's what angle it's at. And then we can actually take that data and bring that inside of After Effects and use that for our own goodwill. So all we're gonna do is go here and we're just gonna um, zoom in real close and we're gonna just get that top corner and then we'll um, find our other corner here. I may be zoomed in a little bit too close but I like being nice and tight on these corners because it will come into play um, when we do our final composite. So now we'll just go down to the very end. We don't need to worry about his hand right now. It might overlap but that's not a big deal. So now if we zoom back out, you can see it's made a grid and it's made a grid in 3D space. So now we can actually bring this data inside of After Effects. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to this top little uh, arrow here and we're gonna do export uh, After Effects CS3.vpe file. And this is a file that After Effects can read. So we'll just name this, uh, you know, basic um, cop, basic compositing, come, Positive comp, there we go. Basic comp, hit save, um, and hit okay. And if you need to go back and you wanna do more later, you can always go back and do filter and vanishing point and that um, vanishing point and that grid will be there. Um, so we'll just hit cancel and now we're gonna minimize that and we're gonna go over to After Effects and we're gonna actually import that in. So in this composition, let's make this comp look like our other one. So we'll go comp settings and we're gonna say that we want this to be a square pixel 
and we want the width to be 1280 by 720. Now this reads just like Photoshop. There's no pixel correction needed, looks nice. So now we can do import and we're gonna do vanishing point and we'll uh, click our basic comp VPE and hit okay. And now we're actually gonna just drag that basic comp VPE right on top and if we turn our um, bottom layer off, you can see we got one layer and it's one image there. Now if we um, alt double click on this layer, this uh, composition layer, it'll actually bring us into that composition or we could have double clicked on basic comp up here. Now what you can see here is we have a few different things. We have a camera, a parent, and then an image. And this image is that um, grid that we laid out inside Photoshop and then we have this parent which is uh, linked up to um, our image is linked up to the parent and then we have a camera that's actually viewing this correctly in 3D space. So what we'll do next is figure out how to take what we have currently and now put things on the screen. But we're going to wait and do that next week and we're going to continue the series. Next week we're going to look at how to put some things on the screen and how to get some animation rolling so that you can start doing some clicking of whatever you want on the screen versus having to have somebody live do what you want. So it'll be really cool. So make sure to tune in next week for our second part of our basic compositing series. Well, this week's inspiration comes in form of, well, we already covered this person, but I thought we should cover them again. Because, well, Dwight's back, and Dwight thought it would be a good idea. So if you don't like the fact that I'm doing this again, well, you can blame Dwight. So anyway, um, SignalNoise.com, which is the artistry of James White, who is a phenomenal designer. Really great skills, and um, he is just, he's a great designer. Now, he just finished the O series, um, which I can't remember what it was exactly for, but for the first time ever, James White's put a tutorial online. Now, the O series isn't exactly my favorite James White um, artistry and that kind of stuff, but what is cool is the fact that he's showing how to do it. And one thing that I've always loved about his stuff, about Signal Noise's stuff, is the coloring. And so the thing I was most excited about as I scrolled through this tutorial um, was seeing how he does his coloring. So you can whip through here and you can see how he's doing his blending modes and how he's getting his coloring to look the way it does. Because he does a fantastic job with coloring. So... Um, he, it's a very simple, quick tutorial. You can find it at blog.signalnoise.com slash question mark P equals 484. Yes, that's a simple URL, and I said it all. I didn't really need to, but I did it anyway, and you guys can yell at me later via Twitter or the website. Um, but anyway, so check out SignalNoise.com. Get some great inspiration from James's work, as well as check out this tutorial um, just so you can see, and check out some of his other work first, and then apply these principles that he covers in his tutorial to the other work, and it might help you figure out how to do some of the great stuff he does in his other tutorials. So check out SignalNoise.com. Well, this week's freebie is another fall worship loop for you. This is kind of an abstract one that I shot the other day, and this will come in handy for you and will look real nice. That last one, I'm sorry, the loop wasn't great on it. I was really rushed, so I'm really sorry that last week's uh, worship loop wasn't the most amazing thing in the world, but I still want to give you guys something free every now and again. So, um, But this week's one I really do enjoy. It looks really nice and I'm, I'm really happy with it and I think it'll be a great addition for your fall time and it's not too distracting. So um, check out this abstract fall loop and add it to your arsenal. Well, we wanted to take a moment and say thank you to our sponsor. Our first sponsor is worshiphousemedia.com, resources for the creative church. Worship House Media um, has been a longtime sponsor, and if you head over to their website and use the promo code CMDTV1, you'll get 25% off your order. So you can check out the Thanksgiving store and the Christmas store, um, and if you hit uh, the Just Added button, you'll see all of the newly Just Added uh, videos and stills and motions, and I have a link on my website to uh, the Just Added feed, so you can check out the all of the newest stuff as it rolls in so uh, that's really handy if you don't want to come over to the site and hit the button but you still want to stay in the loop so head over to worshiphousemedia.com and use the promo code of cmdtv1 and get 25 percent off your order and next is our newest sponsor of dansinkintoner.com now if you head over to dansinkintoner and click on wholesale you'll find out about his wholesale plans 
which you get a th uh, if you use the promo of Church Media Design when you sign up, you'll get a three month no risk trial. And in that trial, you can order ho uh, wholesale ink and toner. So this is at cost ink and toner for your church. Now we use this at our church um, for all of our crazy different printers. We actually just ordered for our HB printer that's been out for a long time and we saved more than half um, of the cost that we normally spent when we went to Staples to buy the, the ink and toner. So um, I would really encourage you guys to check it out as well as Beyond Toner, Dan is hooked up with another site that you can get uh, office supplies and all sorts of different things for your church cleaner and all, all the different office products you would need so you can get discounts on all of that stuff as well. So it's more than just toner, but I know you can save boatloads on your toner. So if you go over there and please use the promo code of uh, Church Media Design, and it's super easy. You can just go in and you can add as many printers as you want. This is what it looks like when you log in and place your orders. Um, it's real simple. Um, and I actually made this site for Dan. Um, just so you know, I want to be as free with the information as possible. So um, I'm actually pretty proud of how it turned out, but you can go in and add your add all your different products in there and submit your order. And your order is pretty much, most of the time, it's like Netflix, it shows up pretty much next day. It's uh, one day for shipping. So um, two days tops kind of thing. So, and your uh, shipping is free. So make sure to check out danzinkintoner.com and check out the wholesale program and get your church signed up so you can save a bunch of money because even though gas prices might be going down, I know that we're still all financially crunched at church and why spend money on toner when you can spend it on a new microphone or a camera? Because we all know we would rather have that than a whole bunch of expensive toner that we didn't need to buy in the first place. So uh, check out danzinkintoner.com and worshiphousemedia.com. Well, thanks for tuning in to another edition of Church Media Design TV. And come home, it's our prodigal son, it's Colonel Sanders. So we finally have the three wise men in Jesus and, of course, Ben Stein, our special guest. So it's been great to have um, our new special guest with us, as well as have all of the bottle, bobbles come back um, to the desk. I don't even know where they were. They were probably voting like I did today. So um, I wonder if they voted for Obama or McCain. Or maybe you wrote in Ron Paul. Um, who knows? Anyway, so just thanks for tuning in. If you guys have any questions or comments or something that you'd like to learn, please make sure to send me an email, brad at churchmediadesign.tv, or leave a comment on the website, and or uh, hit me up on Twitter. You can follow me, uh, I am CMDTV, and you can follow Adam, who is Adam CMDTV, and you can follow us uh, both up and get updates of what we're up to, and um, Adam always has crazy comments about video games and cars and um, different random things that... He has more interest in than I do. So it's um, some cool stuff. So make sure to check out both of us on Twitter. And you can message us, message us up on Twitter um, as well and ask questions on there and uh, leave comments there as well. So uh, thanks for tuning in. And I hope I'll find out sooner or later who wins the election. Some cowboy is singing on the stage right now. And uh, you guys already know. And uh, Adam's putting down right here, Brad, you're an idiot, this person won. Um, but I can't see into the future, but Adam can. Thanks for tuning in. It's the three wise men and Jesus and me saying, see you later. Mm -hmm.